Hey everyone, it's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. I was given a copy of the ballot yesterday, and if you saw our Friday night video, I saw it for the first time when I was with the retiree advocate, the retired teachers who are running to take over their retired teacher chapter and replace the Unity Caucus of Michael Mulgrew and Tom Murphy. And this is one of the reasons why. In the ballot that many people received, and yes, we're aware that many of you haven't, just give it a little bit more time and they should be on their way. If not, as we keep saying, please call the United Federation of Teachers and the American Arbitration Association by Monday, May 20th, and tell them you did not get your ballot, and then make sure you get one. Vote right away and put it in the post office, or if you're in the city, bring it down to American Arbitration. So I want to show you the propaganda put out by, by the Unity Caucus of Michael Mulgrew, taking credit for everything that he didn't do. Uh, um, approve, pass, or implement, but yet he has no shame in taking credit for it. Just like he's tried to take credit for stopping the co-pays, which he implemented, uh, the Medicare Advantage plan, which he implemented, saying that it wasn't ready, so he had to stop it, but he implemented it. This is all a sham. And it's about time that this gets exposed because I'm really, I get fed up by looking at this and I can't believe the audacity of this man never seems to end. In the video that we were given from Florida UFT RTC chapter, he blatantly lies to a room full of retirees, including a woman in her 80s with cancer. He doesn't care. All he cares about is himself. He's not caring about you, the active teacher, and he's definitely not caring about you, the retired teacher. So let's look at this document. So you will see that this is, the future is not a gift, it is an achievement. <laughs> well, Mr. Mulgrew, uh, let's, there's so much caca in this. I'm, I highlighted just about three things because otherwise I could be here all day. So let's take this down. Protecting your economic security. You've actually destroyed our economic security. You've imploded the entire health program for the entire city of New York with your 2014 MLC agreement, which you did. You spearheaded. You convinced all the unions to do, making the promise to them that their health care would be better going along with your scheme. And you only did that to sell off everyone's health insurance, active and retired, in order to get raises in your 2014 contract, which you never told anybody. Most unions unions don't know that when you went to ratify that contract, you referred to the MLC agreement as Appendix B, but you never gave it to any of your active teachers voting to ratify that contract. They didn't find out until after what you did. And many of them still today don't even know what happened. So in this propaganda flyer that you distributed, you put down here, enhancing your retirement, health care, the new health coverage plan negotiated by the Municipal Labor Committee is currently in litigation as we await its outcome. Yes, of course, it's in litigation because the retirees organized and created an organization to sue the city to stop what you guys were implementing, which was forcing us into managed care and stripping away benefits that retirees earned from their decades of service to the city of New York. You did that, Michael Mulgrew, in order to get your raises for the city. Um, then it says, meanwhile, your present coverage remains in place. Again, that's thank you to the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees and our litigation and our attorneys for stopping what you implemented. Today, retirees citywide have their health care because of us, not because of you. Here's the real kick in the head. Are you listening, folks? Because this, this doesn't get any more ugly ever. He says, the UFT leadership is committed to a high quality, premium free plan, preferably with a pay up option. Now let's break down what that means. He wants to give you what he determines is a high quality free plan with a pay up option. Meaning if you want something better or if you want choice, you have to pay for it. Yeah, um, Mike, um, union leaders, like real union leaders, they don't tell their retirees or their employees that they're going to let them pay for something that they already earned. Um, that is absolutely horrible. 
uh, and irresponsible on your part. Union workers fought their entire life, gave up things in order to have their health care, especially those that are retired, because we know what we did and gave up in order to have in retirement, pension, and health care. And you are trying to steal that away from us. You write, such a plan would have features far superior to any existing current existing coverage. Um, Mike, managed health care, Medicare Advantage is not superior to any existing coverage. And and even more so, your own teachers testified before city council that it was okay to offer the Medicare Advantage plan, which of course it is because it's been offered, they've been offered for years. You just never forced anyone. The city of New York, you know, regular, normal, educated union leaders never forced anyone into managed care. And there was a choice. And we're going to get to choice in a second. But to say that managed health care is superior to our current coverage when it is a federal public health benefit, you're off the mark, Mike. You then write over here, protecting your health benefits. Al Shanker, because, of course, all your retired teachers love Al Shanker, the previous union president. Following the 1965 Medicare Act, petitioned the city to provide health coverage for retirees who till then had no health benefits. That's wrong, Mike. Actually, retirees uh, had health benefits. There was health care in place. Actually, City of New York had a health care plan since 1941, although people did pay for it, both retired and active. And I'm going to show you that, too, is clearly this is the history you don't know. Um you said uh, petition the city to provide health coverage for retirees who till then had no health benefits, including continued coverage for the 55 to 65 year old pre-Medicare retirees. The city continues to pay the 20 percent not covered by Medicare, along with the full Medicare B reimbursement. And again, Mike, that is because of the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees, that retirees still have that benefit. Oh, and by the way, the 20% of coverage that Medicare doesn't cover, you tried to diminish that by then forcing co-pays on all retirees over 65 or on disability because you were trying to extrapolate more value from the health care plan. That was why we then filed the next, the second litigation called the copay class action case where we sued the city for the implementation of those copays and we're still in court on those we won the injunction we won the supreme court part we went to appeal we're now waiting for the first department court of appeals argument on that so again you're claiming that you you, you did or you accomplished something with or your your uft retirees and teachers have a benefit based on something you did not provide I also now want to show you about health care, um, and then I'll come back to this document. So I did happen to say that that we did have a choice. Now, this document is from February 11th of 1965, and this isn't the earliest one. This is just one of the ones I want to show you in that there was a resolution passed by the Board of Estimate director of budgets, it went through and it said this resolution for adoption was submitted by the personnel director approving contracts with Associated Hospital Services of the Greater of New York, Group Health Insurance, Inc., which is GHI, Mike, um, United Medical Service and Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, which was your then hospitalization, to provide a choice of health insurance plans for certain uniform forces. And why is that? Because from 1964, with the 1964 contract, the uniform forces, specifically police, had health care that the city paid for. It was getting the city to open that up to everybody else. But mind you, HIP was here since the 40s, you had health care, and so did retirees. Now listen to this. As a result of collective bargaining, the city has agreed to the following. Assumption by the city of New York of 75% of the total payment for choice of health and hospital insurance, not to exceed 75% of the full cost of HIP Blue Cross 21-day plan on a category basis, effective January 1 of 1965. Two, assumption by the city of New York, the full payment for choice of health and hospital insurance not to exceed 100% of the full cost of HIP Blue Cross 21-day plan on a category basis, 
which is was individual and family, and it still is today, unless you want to twist what reality is, effective January 1 of 1966 for consideration. What does that mean, Mike? That means that in that year, between 64 and 66, the, the Uniform Coalition negotiated health care to be paid for entirely by the city of New York. And what does that coincide with? That actually coincides with the Medicare Act that got passed at the urging of the unions, Martin Luther King, um, President Lyndon Johnson, and then given to retirees as well. And I want to show you that too. But I want you to understand something. The, the, the vision of Mayor LaGuardia, Mayor Wagner, Mayor Lindsay, was that employees and retirees had free health care as a benefit and that they paid for it. And it was at this point in time that the city picked up the full cost of it. And it was as a result of the uniform collective bargaining, not the teachers, and definitely not unity, Mike. Now... Let's go to another, doc let's go back to the original document. This next part really lights me on fire. You are taking credit for Medicare B reimbursement, and that's not for you to take credit for, and I'm going to prove that to you too. Full Medicare reimbursement for Medic, full reimbursement for Medicare B Part B. Unity leadership won this benefit by lobbying the city council to override a mayor's veto. Members and spouses, domestic partners last year were reimbursed in full, including the higher income Irma surcharge, which is reimbursed separately. Um, Mike, you didn't do that last year. You didn't do that ever, actually. Let me show you exactly who did. This was actually a benefit that was negotiated and lobbied by District Council 37 and many retiree organizations. Although it was supported by your union, your union didn't show up to testify. You sent a TRS trustee to do so. Let me show you that testimony, Mike. Now, this is a hearing that took place in City Council April 10th of 2001 for the Committee on Governmental Operations. And you will see that the people that are appearing to testify are the officers of DC 37 Retirees Association who did lobby the council, Mike, and heavily because, because they were intricately involved in preserving Medicare B, not the teachers and not ever. You did help support it, but not like DC 37 did. Now, Here's John Salazzo from the Uniform Retired Firefighters Association. And here's Sandra March, trustee of the Teachers Retirement System, United Federation of Teachers. She was the only representative that appeared on behalf of Randy Weingarten. Randy didn't show up to support this. She sent someone to read a statement. Here's the rest of the people that showed up. Frank Martinez from Comro, Erwin Yellowitz, the chair chapter of PSC Cooney, Eugene Lowy, who's still alive, he's in his 90s, from the national from the uh, uh, president of the 1013 Association out in out in the island. Um and then Fred Ewald, managerial MEA, also a representative of Comro. Now, if I go back and ask again this document to show me when exactly. Uh, how many times the word teachers appears, you will see that this testimony by Ms. March is the only testimony from any UFT person. That's not a heavy lobby, Mike. And Ms. March is from, it was representative of, of Randy Weingarten. She was here to read this testimony in support of Medicare reimbursement in its full. And so you are aware this was the very last time that an amendment was made to Administrative Code 12-126. It was not the teachers that did that. So, Michael, I'm going to ask you again. Fact check yourself, and I'm going to urge all United teachers, in-service teachers and retired teachers, fact check everything that your union puts out. The history is there if you go to look for it. They did not. They're not the ones that passed the Medicare B reimbursement. They supported the District Council 37 doing it because it helped all retirees, and it was a benefit for all employees as well. It was a promise that the city would pay the full cost of health insurance. And the reason why that bill was passed in, 2020, in 2001 
was because even though the law was passed in 1967, the city will pay the full cost of health insurance up to the HIP HMO for every employee, retiree, and their dependent. Because of the fiscal crisis and Medicare was new. So the Medicare B premium started out at $3 in 1965. And it just kept going up a couple bucks, a couple bucks every year. And the council wouldn't have known that the premium or wouldn't have looked prospectively that the cost of that would have increased. It was only when it started happening, did the city have to keep going back to say, all right, let's re let's increase what the city is reimbursing because there was a period of time that they weren't reimbursing everything, and sometimes not at all. It was it was temporarily um, put on hold and then reimbursed later. There was also a fight because many employees retire when they retire because they're low income. They can't afford to pay for Medicare B premium. So your UFT retirees who make seventy hundred thousand something dollar pensions, or some of your educators in the in the higher education realm that make several hundred thousand dollar pensions, these people have no issue with that. But for DC thirty seven retirees and retirees that retired that are still alive from the 70s, 60s, and seventies, their pensions are small. Or there's civilians like myself who have an under thirty five thousand dollar pension. So when you look at that. They can't afford to pay for insurance, Mike. They can't afford your pay-up option for choice. We were promised free, premium-free health care. We were also promised a choice of free health care because that's what we negotiated. And you're trying to take that away. You're trying to say, well, you can only have choice if you pay up for it. Pay up. Why don't you actually say what you're, what, what it is, Mike? You want retirees to pay premium. You want people that once they retire to pay premium. Meanwhile, you're advocating for premium free health care or free health plan, premium free health plan, unless you're retired and you want choice in a plan other than the one we want to stick you in, even if you don't like it or your doctors don't take it. That's not real, Mike. Unity doesn't belong in, in office. You don't belong to run your union or your retiree chapters, sadly, because you're OK to blatantly lie to the faces of your in-service and retired workers. And that, to me, is abhorrent. You should not be doing that. For anyone that just got an RTC, retired teacher chapter from the United Federation of Teachers, I urge you to change the momentum of where your union is going. They have no problem with selling you out today. And in our opinion, that's not union. We need a good, strong union to protect not only in service, but the benefits that retirees earned. And this propaganda document that was put in your ballot is even more proof that this caucus, the unity caucus, is not deserving of being in power because they're willing to rob you blind and lie to your face about it. Urge all of you, please vote for the retiree advocate slate. One X in that ballot sheet, tear it off, put it in the secret ballot, lick that closed, put that in the mail or envelope and bring that to the post office and do that today. Change starts with you. Stop being lied to and gaslit by your own union president. Take your union back. Good luck, everyone.